This is Dan Schneider. If you guys don't know who Dan Schneider is, let's go to this. All right, he worked at Nickelodeon, guys, all right? And let's see, a lot of the headlines are pretty, yeah, a lot of the headlines, uh, let's see, Dan Snyder, Nickelodeon. A lot of the headlines right now are going to be bad, which they should be, right? Uh, this is Dan Snyder. He worked at Nickelodeon for a number of years. Guys, he is the, look, can you see the guy see this? I just slid it over. D Daniel James Snyder is an American uh, television producer, screenwriter, and actor. He is the founder and co-president of the production company Snyder's Bakery, which he established in 2003 after working as a supporting actor in film and television throughout 1980s and 1990s. Guys, a lot of the shows, a lot of our favorite shows right here, iCarly, The Amanda Show, these are all Dan Snyder shows. All right. Victorious was a show that I liked. All right. And I wasn't too big on Nickelodeon, but I did like some shows on Nickelodeon. Kenan and Kale was one of my shows. Um. Yeah, a lot of but a lot of these shows I do know, right? And I'm sure you guys know probably all of these shows. Sam and Cat, Zoe 101, super famous, super big show. Drake and Josh, super popular show. I Carly, super popular, right? Um. But while this was all going on, guys, things weren't as um great as they seemed, right? This is Nickelodeon, a kids channel, kids shows, shows made for children. Um, a lot of times. Um, there were children on these shows, right? What is what we're gonna get into today? Um, but the guy Dan Snyder, right? The guy who uh, made all these shows, essentially, who made our favorite shows, was a super big creep, chat. And I actually found out about this not too long ago. Let's take it to my uh, TikTok, where I made a few videos on this. Let's go to my other page. I have a couple pages on TikTok. All right, this is my other page right here. I'll follow Rome too. If you guys don't know about this page, this is my uh, page where I post a lot of scary stuff, creepy stuff. If you see it right here, that's in the bio. Things that keep you up at night, right? It's pretty pretty simple. Things that keep you up at night. If you guys don't follow this page yet, uh, I'll suggest you guys go follow this page, all right? Um, now, I've got wind of Dan Snyder some time ago, right? This was 2022 or 2023, that I got some wind about Dan Snyder and I made a couple of videos. I think this is it right here. Here we go. Let's check this one out. Creepy things seen on TV PT.3. Sentence number one. Oh man, I thought you Vila got stuck between that hamster's toes. See? Alright, now before I play this, <clears throat> um, this is Ariana Grande, of course, right? We all know that she was on Nickelodeon. Um, and these are just some clips of uh, the shows, right? And things that Dan Snyder had uh, these children, right? The children at the time had them doing. All right, let's check this out. Creepy things seen on. Let's see. Let's see if you guys. Let's see if anything about this seems off to you guys. All right. TV PT.3. Sentence number one. Oh, man. I thought you Vila got stuck between that hamster's toes. See, that could never happen because your uvula is that swingy thing in the back of your throat right here. So there's no way you could get it stuck between a hamster's toes. <laughs> I'm soaking wet. Quick, somebody bring me the ocean. If you were soaking wet and you were upset about it, the last thing you'd want is for somebody to bring you the ocean. Because the ocean is even more wet than even the wettest person in the world. Have you ever tried to get your whole big toe in your mouth? Check this out. Sometimes I wonder if you can get juice from a potato. Chat. I don't think I need to say much. You guys picked up on anything? Guys, chat, there's a, a number of weird things. Look, let's let's take this. The potato. What is it like she's holding? You hear the sound she's making? Now these are all ideas of Dan Snyder. Right? For her to do. She's talking about being wet. Creepy things seen on TV PT.3. Sentence number one. Oh man, my uvula got stuck between that hamster's toes. See? And it's just all super weird, right? That could never happen because your uvula is that swingy thing in the back of your throat right here. 
So he's not he wants to see a gag face, right? If you guys not picking up, let me point out some of these things to you. He has her put her finger in the mouth because he wants to see her gag. He wants to see her gag face. In the back of your throat right here. So there's no way you could get it stuck between a hamster's toes. <laughs> I'm soaking wet! Quick! I'm soaking wet. Chat, these are children. Again. Now these are a lot of things that went over our heads when we watched this. When we were watching Nickelodeon, there was a lot of stuff that we didn't pick up on, chat. Right? As children. Somebody bring me the ocean! If you were soaking wet and you were upset about it, the last thing you'd want is for somebody to bring you the ocean. Now, you know, guys, what, know what bring me the ocean means? Or what I take it to mean, right? She says, I'm soaking wet. Bring me the ocean. You know what bring me the ocean is? If she's wet, bring the ocean would be the guy finishing. And listen to how she explains it. The last thing you'd want is for somebody to bring you the ocean. Because the ocean is even more wet than even the wettest person in the world. Have you ever tried to get... You guys see how we see her? You guys see where this is going? So like she's wet, bringing the ocean, and then he finishes, and then they're... Put your whole big toe in your mouth. Check this out. And he has a thing for feet, right? We're going to get into that. He has a, a super big thing for feet and for toes, all right? This is Dan Schneider again. Let me get back to him and show him again in case you guys have forgotten already. This is Dan Schneider. Creepy Dan. That's what we're calling him. This is Creepy Dan. Chat, look at the positions that, are, that he has her in. Now, why would a, ch a child need to be laying like this, chat? Legs spread, toes in the mouth. Why would a child need to be laying like this, chat? A teenager. Sometimes I wonder if you can get juice. All right, there's another video. <clears throat> there's another video. I think I posted a three-part. We'll just check out two if I can find it here. There's... Uh, Let's see. Where was that? Where is that last one? That moments happen on TV? No. It's uh creepy things seen on TV? Right here. Creepy things seen on TV P T point five. Come on, chat. Come on, chat. Come on, chat. <laughs> Y'all see where this going, chat? This creepy dance, chat. We what? What are we? We what? Three minutes in? Where's the timer? Probably three minutes in. We're about 20 minutes into the stream, but what? About three minutes into some of this Dan Snyder stuff. And we see Ariana Grande with her legs spread, sucking on her own toes, upside down with her mouth open wide, looking like she's ready to take a... And pouring water on herself. Chad, this is all the direction of Creepy Dan. All right? Creepy Dan. The guy who brought us our favorite shows on Nickelodeon. All right? It's not possible. <laughs> A D. I've always gotten A's in music. How does a person go from an A to a D? Happened to me in eighth grade. A D, Chad, you seeing this? A D. Now I just got the A part. How does a person go from an A to a D? You know what the A is, right? I didn't... Chad, when I made this video, when was this? This is the beginning of 2023. I knew about the D. You know what the D part is. You know what the D is, right? The D. We're giving it a D. You know what the A is. A is the... Can I say it on this? I don't know how far we, we delve, we're going in today. I don't know what I can and can't say when it comes to a matter like this. But we know what the A is, chat. From the A to the D. I've always gotten A's in music. How does a person go from an A to a D? Happened to me in eighth grade. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Chat, the, the A is the ASS. The A and the D. And then she comes and says it happens to me. It happened to me in the eighth grade. 
Chad, this is a kid show. Right? Creepy Dan. This is stuff we missed. This is stuff we laughed at as children. We laughed at the at this kind of these these some a lot of these jokes as kids. Right? What about the kids that didn't miss it? No, what about the kids that did that knew what they meant? What about the adults? We're gonna get into that. How does a person go from an A to a D? Happened to me in eighth grade. Yeah. <laughs> okay, on three, I'm gonna just do it. All right. There we go. <laughs> Remember, I said Dan Snyder had a thing for feet. A foot fetish. <laughs> Spread your toes. Spread your toes, girl. Woo! I still say this is not performing. You two are gonna work the grub truck. Gross! Trina. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Why should I? <laughs> Chat. Chat. You know what this is, right? You know what this is supposed to be, chat, right? For adults, you know what what the what the what the pedo what the pedos are are getting off on right now? What this looks like to them, what this is supposed to be. Isn't this kidnapping? Set her down. Okay. Let go! My dad is a cop! Take her behind the street and get her address. Come on, come on, come on. What are you doing? What are you doing? Just the girls. Back there, put it on her. It's it. Put this on her head. That's not my head! Creepy things she... It's nasty work, chat. It's nasty work. Now, these are just the videos I made, all right? A couple clips I made. I got wind of this way back. Like I said, this was the beginning of last year. Essentially, almost 2022. Um, but, chat, <clears throat> this is just me. Apparently, this was known. Um, apparently... It's been known about Dan Snyder for a long time, right? Even while he was making these shows. Now, recently, um, <clears throat> Drake Bell has come out and has spoken on some of the things that happened to him um, during his time at Nickelodeon. Let's check this out. Drake Bell, known for his role as a child star, is now speaking up about something serious for the first time, the SA he faced when he was just 15 years old. He's bravely sharing his story on an upcoming TV series called Quiet On Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, which is scheduled to air on March 17th and 18. In the documentary, Drake Bell reveals that he was abused by Brian Peck, who worked as a dialogue coach on Nickelodeon's shows like All That and The Amanda Show. Bell was part of The Amanda Show cast from 1999 to 2002, and later starred in his own Nickelodeon series, Drake and Josh, which began in 2004. Peck faced serious legal trouble when he was arrested in August 2003 on 11 charges linked to accusations of SA involving an unnamed child. In May 2004. What? I got the crows and stuff. So they got these crows outside my window. I think these crows just come to mess with me because I'll go outside and throw rocks at them crows, like, so they fly off. I think they come back, like, and try to mess with me. All right. Um, yeah, no. All right. So look. Trouble when he was arrested in August 2000. His own Nickelodeon series, Drake and Josh, which began in 2004. Peck faced serious legal trouble when he was arrested in August 2003. On a okay. So this guy was arrested in August 2003, but after his arrest was still. And look what he was arrested for. 11 charges linked to accusations of S.A. involving an unnamed child. In May... Chat, he was arrested for sexually assaulting a child. Look, lewd acts against a child under 14. Oral copulation with person... Was that over 16? Over 16? Or was that under 16? So lewd act. And oral copulation. We know oral copulation means he was he was getting head. He was giving head. <clears throat> Pause. To one of the was it what are the the boys? Right? Chat, these children were on set. While we're thinking they're having a good time, these children were on set facing real life horrors. And people knew about it. 
This guy, Brian Pat, was already arrested. He was already arrested. In 2004, Peck pleaded no contest to engaging in a lewd act with a 14 or 15 year old and to oral copulation with a minor under 16. As a result, he was sentenced to 16 months in prison and was required to register as an offender in October 2004. For more than 20 years, Drake Bell kept his identity hidden as the minor involved in that case. Quiet on. Okay, so that was Drake Bell. Okay, and that makes sense. You know, something like that happens to you, chat. Come on, man. You're not going to want something like that out, right? That could be embarrassing. It's hurtful. Him as a child, right? He took advantage of Drake Bell, right? Under 14, under 16. He's a teenager, right? He's just showing up to Nickelodeon to do shows, and you have this predator that's, you know, talking him into some other stuff. Now, to me, at that kind of age, I think... Now, a lot of people may say, now, how does, how does this guy do... How does this guy talk you into to something like that? But Chad, like when he's already an aspiring child actor, right? Um, there's a lot of incentives, right? This is Hollywood, right? We know about Hollywood and the dark side of it and the things you're offered. We know about selling your soul, right? We know about they like people can tell people will tell you, I'll put you in these positions. Hey, if you want this show, then you need to um, do this skit where you take your pants off. Do this funny joke where you take your pants off. It's going to be funny, right? Or let me touch you there, right? And then it turns into something else, right? And by that time, I imagine Drake is so scared to, this guy Drake Bell is so afraid to even say something, right? He's afraid to say something to somebody because it's something just that's super bad happening to him. Which, Chad, I want to say right now, if something ever happens to you, if there's any children that's watching this, something ever happens to you, or Chad, I would advise you to tell your children or any other children that we need to speak up. People need to speak up. Not we. I'm going to say we because nothing ever happened to me. <laughs> Let's get that out there right now. <laughs> nothing ever happened to me. Thank God. By the grace of God. But because um, there's a lot of stories out here. So that's why I say by the grace of God. But um, people need to speak up when something happens. Right then and there. Not to wait. Um, these people need to be uh, shamed, brought out, and held accountable for the acts they're doing. All right? So people need to speak up and not be afraid. I know people are afraid of what others are going to say. They are afraid of that person who's probably committing those acts um, on them. And they're probably afraid. They made me think that they're doing something wrong. All right? So that could be one of the reasons that they don't say anything either. Because he, he did wait. He just said something recently, came out. But he did wait. He waited over 20 years is what they're saying. Look, Chad, look, the Nickelodeon right here, they got the foot. Now, remember I said Dan Snyder had a foot fetish? They got the big foot at Nickelodeon, chat. It was in our face the whole time. And I think this is the studios in LA. I want to say this is Nickelodeon Studios in LA. Over off Sunset in the Hollywood area. Maybe in North Hollywood. But chat, it was in our face the whole time. Big foot, the toes. What's this? Genuinely amazed that the editor was caught literally by Chris Hansen. Wasn't mentioned. Wait. Was this an editor on the show? On Nickelodeon? El Decoy is about to say hello to 27-year-old Justin Smith, a video post-production editor who does freelance work for Nickelodeon, the cable network geared towards kids. Using the screen name Resident Smith, he chats online to a decoy who tells Smith she's a 13-year-old girl. After the decoy sends a picture, Smith writes, It's definitely bad. I think you're this cute. Laugh out loud. The girl asks, How come? He writes back, Because I'm 27. He sends her several naked pictures of himself. But the next mm. day, Smith seems to express regrets. Chat, this is the editor for Nickelodeon. Now, this is what I think. Imagine, okay, imagine this guy, right, is on set with Brian Pat, the one who was already arrested for sexual assault in 2003. Dan Snyder, Creepy Dan, right? He's on set. This guy is the one editing all the skits that they shoot, right? Everything that Creepy Dan comes up with to have them do, have them do this guy edits. So he sits at, the, guys, you know what the editor does? You sit at the computer and he edits all the videos. So this guy watches the footage over and over and over and he cuts it he cuts each part the jokes where he cut in and said um that happened to me once in the eighth grade i went from a to d right in the eighth grade he's the one that's editing this stuff all right so while he may not be 
doing anything on set, chat, it's only a matter of time before if he's into that kind of stuff, if he's into children and that kind of creepy stuff, it's only a matter of time before he's out somewhere else doing it. Now, this time he was caught by Chris Hansen, right, on To Catch a Predator. What about the times he wasn't caught, chat? That's what people not, that's what people not, are not thinking about. So not people, that's what people are not talking about. People are only talking about the times that he was caught. The times Brian Patton was caught. The times Creepy Dan um, was caught. It can be dangerous, he writes. The girl asks, how come? Smith replies, because it's illegal. Over the course of 10 days, Smith... So he knows it's illegal. Clearly. Smith sends her links to 40 pornographic videos showing everything from oral sex to sex among multiple partners. He tells her when he comes over, he wants to perform oral sex on her. And now, here he is, walking into the house. Hey, come on in. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Awesome. Good. I made us some drinks. Awesome. And we have a He's walking in all normal. Chad, this is the editor for Nickelodeon. And he thinks this is a 14-year-old girl that he's going to perform oral sex on. Hot dog. Awesome. I really liked your videos, by the way. Did you really? Sorry, Ben. I think it took me like 21 minutes to get down here because there was so much traffic. Are you serious? Where do you live? North Hollywood. Oh, that's not bad. We had a North Hollywood. That's where the studios is. I just said that. Remember? That's where the studios is. He said he lives in North Hollywood. A lot to talk about, you and I. Why don't you just have a seat right there, please? Okay. Keep, no, I need to. No. Seriously. Go. You're going to want to talk to me. I'm sorry. Trust me on this. Now, you work at Nickelodeon, huh? No. You don't. What's your name? Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on your knees. Put your hands on your head. Back your head. On your knees. Both knees. Both knees. I really wasn't going to do that. Stand up down. I swear to God. Smith is taken to the processing center where a police investigator interviews him. I'd be lucky if I have any sort of resemblance to my job, to my friends, to the way my family perceives me, to the girlfriend I've had, the dog we have together. He knew coming in that what he was doing was wrong. That's why when he realized that he was caught. Did he say he had a girlfriend? I really wasn't going to do that. Stand up, I swear to God. Shit. <laughs> Man, you chat. He looked like the typical creep. And see, this is why white people get away with a lot of shit because to America, this guy looks super innocent. But to me, he looks like a school shooter. Chat, a predator. Look how he comes in, he comes in with the orange hair. Nah, something's off about this guy. Nah, hell nah, chat. Something's off about this guy. Chad, you see this guy walking down the street? Here he is walking into the house. Hey, come on in. Nah, something's off about this guy. Hell nah. Hell nah, Chad. These are the creeps. You don't even see these kind of people out walking around. You know why? Because they're always in the cracks and crevices. This is the only time they come out. When they come out to do creepy shit. Or when they're at work. Other than that, they're inside. On his computer. Editing videos of children. And who knows what else. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Awesome. Good. I made us some drinks. Awesome. And we have a hot dog. Awesome. I really liked your videos, by the way. Did you really? Sorry, Ben. Hell no, nah, chat. Hell no. Nah. This guy looks like a fucking creep. Looks like a creep. So this guy was an editor on Nickelodeon chat. It's, it's deep. I mean, I was just a growing boy trying to, you know, fit into my body. And it was just out there for everyone to kind of look at and judge me or, you know, I just felt very exposed. So one week we get a script. There's a new character for me on all of that named Nose Boy, naturally. I'm in a superhero costume, which is just tights and underwear. You know, what was different about this, they, they gave me a prosthetic nose, like an enlarged nose. And they put this same nose on the costume. Check, can you guys hear this? I'm Captain Big Nose. 
Okay, so he says they gave him a big nose. If you guys can't hear him, he said they gave him a big nose, but also put these noses on the costumes, which looks like a dick and balls. All right. Again with the with the cum shot. Got it coming down her face. And the joke in that sketch is effectively a shot joke. It's a shot right. joke for children. I'm just looking back at it. It's just very strange. Frankly, it was just uncomfortable. In the, the moments to myself, you would just be thinking like, hey, this is what we got to do to be on the show. To stay in the cast and stay in the good graces of the people that were higher up. And that's what I was gonna ask. Did the children, because some of them were, some of them were like super, like super young, and some of them were teenagers. And so that's what I was gonna ask. Because teenagers, like, okay, some of this feels super weird, but like he said, you think at that them, they already, they're halfway there. So they're thinking like, okay, well, I've never been here before, right? I'm around all the people. I'm around the stars. I'm on the stage that I want to be on. I'm on TV, and now they're telling me to do this. They're like, okay, well, maybe this is what you have to do. Maybe this is what you have to do, right? These are innocent children that, you know, these are, they took advantage of completely innocent children. These are not children who wanted these kind of things or were, you know what I mean, were this way. These were children, innocent children that were completely taken advantage of. Some of the child actors felt like they could not push back, especially with Dan Schneider. And so I always did my best to be a trooper, never complain, because we knew being close to Dan could mean an extra level of uh, success. It was important to be to be on his good side, and he made it known who was on his good side. That's crazy. Yeah. Thank you to Nicola. Was he in the hot tub with what? Who knows what he's down there grabbing and touching and stuff under that water. He's fully clothed. Well, he's clothed, which is weird, too, in itself. She's in a bathing suit. This is creepy Dan, folks. Today, my special guest is the executive producer of The Amanda Show, Dan Schneider. Thank you to Nickelodeon. Um, thank you to Dan Schneider. Dan, we love you. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you, Nickelodeon. Thank you, Dan Schneider. It's hard to put into words what Dan has done for all of us. I want to thank Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider. He's the guy behind some of the greatest shows on Nickelodeon. His name is Dan Schneider. If you watch Dan Schneider's work, it is completely impossible to escape the notion of feet. Have you ever tried to get your whole big toe in your mouth? Check this out. There's just feet everywhere. Tori, please pour catch. Creepy Dan, we on your ass, Creepy Dan. We on your ass today, Creepy Dan. You're going down, buddy. Up all over your feet. I still say this is not performing. This is why I'm in Hollywood. Yeah. Eat your cereal, kids. <laughs> hey, Dan Schneider, look what you've done to me. Yo, what the f... Chad, what's this? Dan Schneider. Boom! He is responsible for the prolific careers of a bunch of people, bunch of shows that we all have come to know and love from millennials all the way to Gen Z and everybody above, below, and in between. If you are alive right now, you probably are familiar with something that Dan Schneider has created. He's responsible for the careers of Amanda Bynes, Josh Peck, Jamie Lynn Spears, Miranda Cosgrove, Jeanette McCurdy, and even Ariana Grande. Many more, but that's just to name a few. There were some seriously frightening and worrisome things going on at Nickelodeon Studios during that heyday with his company, Schneider's Bakery. 
It seems as though Nickelodeon and everyone involved seem to try to sweep under the rug a lot of strange and worrisome behaviors that we're gonna get into today. Now, Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider have been exposed a million times over by many people on YouTube. I have a new video for you guys because it's time to talk about this monster, Dan Schneider. Could they have prevented this? And if so, why didn't they? If you don't understand why the giant foot plays such a big part in this, you will in a minute. Hidden behind that orange foot is some disgusting, deplorable things. You have a foot fetish, no judgment here, that's all you. But it's different when you put that foot fetish. All right, chat, let me camera down for a second. Let me see if I can get that um, login. In the children TV show. Now that's when it becomes a problem. All his colleagues around him seem to be held accountable, but he doesn't seem to be held accountable. And there was another actress called Alexa Nicholas. She went on Instagram Live. And my mom was like, can you please get Dan? Get Dan here immediately, get the producers here immediately. Someone needs to figure out what just happened to my daughter. So then finally Dan walks in. And Dan has not helped the entire time. And I don't feel comfortable going into details about what I've seen with Dan or like what Dan is. My mom put me in acting like that wasn't my choice. I was six. I All right, let me open up another window while I do that. While I let this play. That way I can pull up the next thing. Put this over here. While this plays. Had to support my family. So it wasn't like I was, mm. you know, came out of the womb like I'm tap dancing and like ready to go or something. It's the thing that I feel the most shame of in my entire life. I, I do not like any of the, the acting work that I have ever, like any of the projects that I've been a part of as an actor. And even talking about it, honestly, my heart starts to race and like I, I feel like I almost could cry. So now, according to a website called Looper.com, for years, prolific producer Dan Schneider occupied a prominent place in the world of children's television, as we've just discussed. Throughout the late 90s and early 2000s, Dan and his Schneider Bakery banner oversaw numerous hit shows on Nickelodeon, including All That, Kenan and Kel, Drake and Josh, and iCarly. At the height of Dan's fame, he was likened to fellow TV titan Norman Lear by the New York Times, a comparison that should indicate just how respected he was at that point in time. I don't like, I don't like Dan. So now let's get into some of the weird stuff that this man is responsible for doing. Like, first of all, we cannot ignore the feet. Huh? So basically what happened is a, a few of us started getting a little older and we would revisit some of Dan Schneider's shows like on Nick at Night or just reruns or whatever. And we started thinking like this very familiar feeling across all of us like, what the fuck were we watching? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. After this we massage my feet. No, gross. Get in between the toes. It was weird. She's a star, so she gets a big, big, she gets a big, a uh, spitball, spitball shooter thing. I want, hey, hey, hey. No, hey, wait, can we get a close up of this? Can you get a close up of this one? Stand up, <laughs> You go, boy. Hey. Amanda, demonstrate. Spitball or five I think, Chad, I think Amanda Bynes may have got some of the worst of Dan Snyder. Have you guys seen Amanda Bynes recently? Have you guys seen Amanda Bynes recently? Amanda Bynes has been through some things. I don't think she took any of this really well. Chad, this is Amanda Bynes. She went from this. Well, she went to this. From this. She was young and bubbly. This lady there, she was all the paper. No, that's not. And you get a gallon of fresh spit. And then you. Look out, man. 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 Thing. What do you think of that explanation? <laughs> I'll be right back, chat. Oh, it was, it was very explanatory. Uh, 
specifically the feet. In. Out. It is absolutely impossible to escape the concept and image of children's feet. Would you smell my foot and tell me what you think? I dare you to spend one day saying yes, yes. Yeah, I'll smell your foot. Thank you. It's just feet everywhere, feet all around. I have a weird talent. What's your talent? Okay, okay, okay I'll show you. I can't believe I'm doing this. It even went so far as to permeate onto Nickelodeon's actual logo for some time, like in the late 90s, early 2000s, a big foot. It was just feet everywhere. And at the time as a child, I think I probably just thought it was funny or whatever, but when some of these fans, reporters, journalists started to look back at these shows with a little bit of perspective, they started to notice that it wasn't just feet being feet featured on the shows, but Dan Schneider himself from his public original Twitter account was soliciting pictures of children's feet from the audience, from Nickelodeon fans on Twitter. It, like, it's just weird. What is his weird obsession with children's feet? Like, sure, put it in your shows. That's kind of weird. Force Ariana Grande to have her feet stuck in a thing so you can tickle them or lick them or whatever weird you did on that episode. I don't know. I don't know. So basically make your own decision up about the feet. To me, I think it's weird. And us over here at BJ Investigates thinks it's weird. As if that's not weird enough, we could end the episode there because it's really weird that the man was asking children for pictures of their naked feet with writing on the bottom of it. It's just very weird, Daniel. It's a really weird thing to do. But then the next thing that they actually did that I think is really strange was Dan would host these recruiting parties for children. He would have pool parties and invite all the kids over and be like, oh, we'll just take care of the kids. No adults need to come over. So he was having pool parties with these kids that are on the show without any kind of adult supervision going on. One of my friends that used to work on a couple of the shows that he did, I mean, this goes back to the mid early 90s and he would spend extremely large amounts of time uh, along with the kids in their in their dressing rooms without any adult supervision in there either. He was just, uh, he, he's just a, a sick dude. And people have known about this in the industry for a long time. This isn't anything that's new to, to people within. With okay, so if people know about this in the industry, how does Creepy Dan Right? How does he allow to continue this? If people know about this, how is he allowed to continue this? Right? That's what makes this so alarming. Because these children were not protected. Right? And people knew. Authorities knew. When I say authorities, maybe not police. Um, maybe police did know about it. But when I say authorities, I mean um, people that are adults. Right? Right? authority figures, people that are adults, people that could have stepped in and um, have done something or said something, all right? That's in there, and it's not anything new to Nickelodeon either. I don't know why Nickelodeon continues to put up with this guy. So in 1997, I was discovered in a mall, and eventually I got a manager and an agent, and then as I started growing in my career, in 2007, my agent um, contacted me and my family about um, possibly getting a good Nickelodeon gig. I personally, at the time, I watched a ton of Nickelodeon and I was very immersed in that lifestyle, so I wanted to pursue it. My mom, and she was my manager at the time, she had some, you know, reservations about it. She didn't really want me being exposed like that, especially because in the audition call listing, they did mention, like, you know, wear something cute, like wear spaghetti straps or a skirt or, you know, whatever. And my mom, when she told me later on that whenever she saw things like that, she thought that it was a little uncomfortable for people to be telling kids what to wear. How old were you at the time? I was probably around 15, 14 years old. And I was actually considered older at the time for what they were looking for. So in 2007, my agent called about the Nickelodeon show. It was for Zoe 101, but because that show I think was getting canceled at the time. It looks like the Spears family is growing again, but this time it's not Britney Spears who's expecting. It's her 16-year-old little sister, Jamie Lynn. Nickelodeon did put out a carefully worded statement saying, quote, we respect Jamie Lynn's decision to take responsibility in this sensitive and personal situation. Our primary concern right now... What? Did Nickelodeon have something to do with that? I mean, of course not her getting, getting, getting pregnant, but did Nickelodeon have something to do with her being sexually active at 16 years old? is for Jamie Lynn's well-being, not our show, Zoe 101. 
they were looking just for anything. And then Dan Schneider's next show was iCarly. So they were looking for, you know, extras or possibly like a lead type of role. So, of course, my agent jumped on that opportunity and we flew out to L.A. for this audition. And when we got there, it was probably like 200 kids. And then these. Oh, were man. No, man. This. Oh, man. Chat, why are they lining these children up for pedos? And creepy men. Random agents hand selected specific kids that they liked or, you know, showed some career. No, man. Hollywood's dark, man. Hollywood is a dark place. The entertainment industry is a dark place, Chad. You think it's all smiles, you think it's all fun, you think it's all glitz, glamour, money. The real Hollywood is a dark place. And no one wants to talk about it because they don't want to be outed, they don't want to get put down, uh, they don't want to get in any trouble. And a lot of times, by the time they are able to speak about it, um, when they're adults, not these children, not these innocent children, but a lot of times when they're adults, um, a lot of times when they could speak on it, they've already, you know, somehow been involved in it. But Hollywood is a very dark place. And then um, once about 40 kids were selected, we were then told to take off our shoes and that we were each going to go into a room to show the producer, who is Dan Schneider, the tape to see who he would want on the show. And, um, of course, you know, we you all... all the kids take their shoes off, man. No. Chat, why not somebody stop this, chat? That's why I don't... That's why I want to know why didn't anyone stop this? This is a whole ring. This is a legal pedo ring. Legally. You have children taking their shoes off. Going inside Creepy Dan's room where it's just him and them. Always ask, like, what would you like us to be doing once we're in there? My agent told me, you got to just take off your shoes, just, like, run around in front of the camera, you know, talk about how much you love being barefoot. And at the time, even, you know, it was like, okay, that's weird. But it didn't think anything of it because I was still young. Then when I saw other kids doing it like their parents were like take your shoes off like we're going in like this is it this is your thing you know it was all the kids that were wearing like the short shorts like the you know spaghetti strap tank tops you know things that were a little more open and less reserved and then once we got into the last room to, before my audition happened my mom kind of looked around and was like this is wrong there's just something really wrong about this and I at the time, I was really upset because I wanted to do this. The new cast started with a two-week comedy boot camp that Schneider held with the help of the team that included the show's dialogue coach, Brian Peck. Right. What? Goodness, Brian Peck. Chat. They did the show with the guy who... The guy who was caught for oral, oral copulation... With the child with Drake, this is the guy who sexually assaulted Drake Bill. And at the parties, the children would be wearing bathing suits. It would be minimally supervised. And to listen to some children who describe these parties, they would say their parents were not even invited. Interestingly enough, most of the kids got discovered by the pool. And I believe, like, it was like Megan Fox and Hillary Duff was another one mm -hmm. who got discovered there at the pool. And the parents were so desperate to have their children be famous for whatever reason. I can't relate. You couldn't have gone to the, I don't know, anywhere where there's clothes. I don't know. So then in 2014, I don't know where this falls in the timeline, but Dan Schneider received a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Kids' Choice Awards. What's up, Kids' Choice Awards? When I was asked to be here to present the first ever Nickelodeon Lifetime Achievement Award, I was like, no way, it's not gonna happen. Not unless you can figure out a way for me to be in two places at once, and you did it. So my body is here in New York, but my heart is out there in LA with all of you guys, because I wanna help honor a guy who has spent his entire life making kids laugh. His name is Dan Schneider, and he's the guy behind some of the greatest shows. Nah, we're gonna have to get Keenan on this. We're gonna have to, get, we're gonna have to find Keenan for this. We're gonna have to find Keenan chat. On Nickelodeon. That's why we're honoring him tonight with the special award. So to Dan, I'd like to say thank you. You've made more milk come out of more kids' noses than anybody else. Congratulations. I'm happy to be here to honor Dan. We are so happy to be here to honor you, Dan. Yes. You not only changed all of our lives, you 
you change Kids TV? You no, know, it's hard to put into words what Dan has done for all of us. And all of you out there and all over the world. So, we'll just say thank you, Dan. So, it is our great honor to present the first ever Nickelodeon Lifetime Achievement Award to a man who's been making all of us laugh for the past two decades. Put your hands together for the one and only Dan Schneider! Did Ariana Grande speak? I don't think she spoke. She didn't want to speak. So here come big old Dan Schneider surrounded by a posse of teeny boppers, all of them hanging all over the man. It's really weird. So thank you for making my life great and just making every day so freaking fun! Thank you, guys! Kids Choice Awards 2014! March 29th, 2018, Nickelodeon and Schneider's Bakery, which is Dan's company, finally part ways. So I guess like allegations had gotten like so bad or whatever, but actually Jake has gotten me an article that I have not read yet. It's by Deadline.com and it's called Nickelodeon Parts Ways with TV series producer Dan Schneider. <clears throat> Exclusive updated. Nickelodeon has ended its long relationship with one of its most prolific creators. Dan Schneider. Probably for the best, considering the feet thing alone. Here's a quote. Following many conversations together about next directions and future opportunities, Nickelodeon and our longtime creative partner, Dan Schneider, Schneider's Bakery, have agreed to not extend the current deal. Nickelodeon and Schneider said in a joint statement to Deadline the following. Since several Schneider's Bakery projects are wrapping up, both sides agreed that this is a natural time for Nickelodeon and Schneider's Bakery to pursue other opportunities and projects. This is kind of weird to me considering like he made his whole career on Nickelodeon. Like, I don't know where he thought he was about to go. I mean, I think everything he ever did was on Nickelodeon, if I'm not mistaken. So it's very strange that it would be natural for him to leave this network whenever he made his career on the network. Maybe it had something to do with something else not maybe natural. Dan and his Schneider's Bakery team have created a string of lasting, groundbreaking hits over the years, including, we've already discussed this, iCarly, Victorious, and the current number one hit show on Nickelodeon, Henry Danger. The statement continued, We thank Dan and his Schneider's Bakery producers, executives, and social media team for their immeasurable contributions to Nickelodeon, and we wish them the best in their future endeavors. And Dan and Schneider's Bakery are proud of the work they did together with Nickelodeon and will always remain big fans of the network. The decision comes as Nickelodeon has opted to cancel Schneider's latest series, Game Shakers, after three seasons. They go on to say, among other things, I hear there had been multiple complaints of abusive behavior against Schneider filed by members of his staff. What's going on back here by the robot? Hold on, let's see what's happening. Let's see what's happening back here. Oh, no! Uh, I haven't got my costume on yet, did I? Are we close to bowling? <laughs> Sorry, caught Jerry in a bad moment there. How much attention does Jeanette need? <laughs> I was trying to what? <laughs> what did the young Snip say? What did his mom say? He went scary of his joy. This big creepy Dan walking around with a camera in everyone's face. Chat, what's going on here? Try it again, but more cat like. <laughs> okay. She's like terrified of him. For years, Schneider had been under a cloud of suspicion over the treatment of some younger stars of his shows. Among the things that have raised eyebrows are his tweeted photos of the toes of his young female stars. Y'all, one thing I will tell you right now is people will actually pay money to look at your feet. I did not know that. I did not know that. That was news to me. But I will tell you that that is the truth. So he's just putting it all out there on the internet for free, these children's toes. I mean, just weird how like, because you're a director of a show that people play- the thing is. He wasn't putting it out there for free. He was getting paid for this. The whole time the ratings are going up. And it's not from kids. The whole time the ratings on these shows are going up, it's from pedos, chat. And weird man with foot fetishes. Play on that you feel like you have access over that person's body to just be posting pictures of their parts. That is gross and weird. These are children. And who was protecting these children? Their parents were the ones dropping them off at the damn pool party. They had to see these tweets about these feet. If I saw somebody tweeting, soliciting pictures of children's feet and they were working with children, I might ask some questions. But these parents don't seem to have. I don't know. Maybe they did. I wasn't there. Schneider has been well documented as having 
temper issues for years. And there's these weird videos too. Like you'll see, like he'll come around with like a, you know, remember the video cameras used to carry around like VHS cameras, whatever. He would come around video recording like the stars on the set. It's almost like they would go rigid, like Ariana Grande, like, hey, what are you doing here? That was amazing. That was one of the better things I've ever heard. And look at the camera chase, like trying to look down her shirt with the camera. Hey. Hi, what's going on here? Why are you sitting on the floor of the set? Because we are. They are. <laughs> did you just bark? No. No, oh, I did not. Must be Remember the, when you said ghost? Down down Who barked? You said a ghost Christmas past. That was really no. scary. Did you hear that? Like it was very obvious that the kids were uncomfortable being around this creep. So the author says, I hear there was a flare up last week. Chad, pictures like this, man, it just, ah, oh, can't stand it. Like that was really no. scary. Did you hear that? Yeah. Like it was very obvious that the kids were uncomfortable being around this creep. So the author says, I hear. Chad, honestly, man, pictures like this break my heart, to be honest with you. Because, like, I can only imagine, like, these, this is an innocent child, and this is creepy Dan. Right, so I can only imagine the things that he's probably saying, the things that are going through his head, the things he's doing. And why is this child sitting on his lap? Here there was a flare up last week. This would have been like around March, 2018. During a meeting Dan had with Nickelodeon executives where they indicated to him that Game Shakers was not getting renewed for a fourth season. Sources say that Schneider's reaction was at least in part due to the fact that Game Shakers was about to wrap production on its third season the following day with a cliffhanger season finale, which would leave fans without any closure. So that's allegedly what he was upset about. The author says, I hear at the meeting, Schneider was also told that with his other Nick, comedy Henry Danger on hiatus another show would move into the production space in the Nickelodeon owned Burbank studio which has housed Schneider's series exclusively for the past few years sources say that Schneider objected to the prospect of having to share the office and production space with the non Schneider's bakery show so there was a little bit of a turf war but I think they were already like you have been accused too much and you gotta go after the ousting after the departure of Dan Schneider from Nickelodeon. The New York Times seems to have attempted to actually rehabilitate Dan Schneider's reputation. Schneider's blog and YouTube channel from when he was Nickelodeon star showrunner captured the way he would interact with the teenage actors and young fans of the show. He posted a video of him spooking the iCarly actress Miranda Cosgrove as she walked into a room. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is so mean. But it wasn't that good. I didn't get that scared. Yo, this guy's always been creepy every chance he's get. It's like a big, scary, fat, just creepy man. Kind of scared. I was a little scared. <laughs> Chad, we gotta start calling these kind of these kind of weird men out, right? But I don't know when it's gonna happen because like there were people around, adults on set. Now he was with children sometimes by himself, but a lot of times there was other adults on set, cameramen. These are other, I want to say weird white creepy men too. But some people who worked on Schneider's shows asked for anonymity because they feared that they would be basically retaliated against by him. She say nice things about me? Because I will tase her if necessary. Uh oh. I have the taser. We haven't had to use it in a long time. I said lots of nice things. So I said nice things about you. Oh. <laughs> That's gonna get on TV. What? That's gonna get on TV. <laughs> They said they viewed his chumminess with young actors as awkward and odd for a powerful middle-aged showrunner. I agree completely. Several recalled that he often spent time during the workday interacting with young fans online. And then after work, he would be texting with child actors about silly matters of teenage internet life. Former crew members recalled that Justice's character had a locker on the set of Victorious decorated with photos of young men. Alongside the word, it's do delicious and who's hot. One of the photos was a headshot of a young Dan Schneider, who's definitely not hot. And there's lots of random stuff in her locker. I've, I'm 
constantly staring at these pictures and I'm just kind of confused by her, her artwork. <laughs> uh, fun fact as well, this is Dan Schneider. This is a younger picture of Handsome. Why does he always look creepy too? Young Dan. Oh, that is gross. Schneider said the locker decoration was likely added by someone in the art department and that it was never his goal as a showrunner to be popular or recognized. Did she say nice things about me? Because I will tase her. Now I know that's bullshit. I know it for a fact, Dan, because I saw your ass in a hot tub with a 12, 14 year old Amanda Bynes. So if you didn't want to be popular and famous or whatever the f bullshit lie you told the New York Times, then you wouldn't have been in that hot tub with a preteen slash young teenage girl or anyone else in the hot tub for that matter. As for interacting with fans online, he said that he did so, quote, only in very public ways that were fully transparent to his colleague. Yeah. These creeps tell us out loud what they're doing every damn day. And then when we find them doing it, they go, I did it in front of y'all. Nobody said anything when I was having pool parties for teenagers at my house. Nope. I don't know why Dan has a country accent, but he does. Just because you were a creep in public doesn't mean you weren't being a creep, you creep. Former crew members also said Schneider seemed to imagine himself as the king of Nick on Sunset, the network's former soundstage. He had a private bathroom next to the one that most of the other staff members had to use. Three former colleagues recalled occasions when staff members pushed him from one room to another in a roller chair so he could keep working en route. <laughs> it was like Wally 1.0. He didn't stand up to walk around other than to chase kids around with his damn camera. He didn't, did he have somebody pushing him around for that? He's disgusting. Forward an ambitious and very different pilot that he has written and sold to another network. I'm assuming it's Disney. Schneider created iCarly. Um, so I, I know him, I know him really well. That's the thing where I was sort of, I mean, if, if that went on, I'm that's, that's devastating to me because I don't see him in that light, you know? So watching clips on YouTube for that is, is like, like crazy. But I mean, the foot fetish is like, okay, bro, come on. Like I never really noticed that when I was 15 on the show, but of course, looking in retrospect, it's like, okay, okay. All right. All the pieces <laughs> fell out. All right. Um, yeah, chat. I don't know, man. This is nasty work. Um, very nasty work. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm gonna get off here, chat. Um, I don't know, but I, I, I do hope, I hope, I do hope Dan goes down. This guy has to go down. This guy is a big fat creep. All right, foot fetish creep, and I hope he goes down. All right. I'm gonna get on out of here, Chad. I'm gonna try to get outside, watch a nice day, um, try to lighten things back up um, after this. But um, for any victims out there, I, my heart goes out to you. Um, I wish you the best. And um, yeah, I don't know, man. All right, all right, guys, I'm out. I'll see you guys next time.